Hello, my name is Jim Sirhan, and I'm Professor of Epidemiology at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. Today I'm talking about a paper we're publishing in the Mayo Clinic Proceedings entitled A Pooled Analysis of Waist Circumference and Mortality in 650,000 Adults. So body mass index, or BMI, is the most common way we measure uh, obesity, both for clinical and public health purposes. It's defined as weight in kilograms uh, divided by uh, height in meters squared. We know a high BMI is associated with higher risk of mortality, and it's the most commonly uh, used measure in the clinic to assess risk of obesity-related uh, diseases and mortality. However, we also know that BMI has uh, some limitations. People with very low BMIs are also at a higher mortality risk, although we think this is confounded by such things as smoking and pre-existing illness. That is, we know people who smoke have lower BMIs, but also higher risks of death. The, there are other issues with BMI, though. It doesn't uh, distinguish lean mass, which is uh, bones and muscle, from fat mass. And it also doesn't tell you anything about where the fat is located, for example, on the hips versus in the belly. We know that uh, fat in the belly has a worse metabolic profile and uh, consequences for multiple chronic diseases. So uh, current uh, uh, recommendations from the U.S. Preventive Task Forces says we only measure BMI to assess um, um, uh, obesity health risks while the U.S. Uh, NIH recommends both obesity and waist circumference, but only waist circumference in the overweight and obese categories. We know that waist circumference is a good predictor of mortality. Most studies have shown this. What is really not well known is how much does waist circumference add once we already know BMI. That was the goal of this study, and uh, the reason this hasn't really been uh, answered definitively is that it takes very large uh, studies to uh, address this because we know waist circumference and BMI are highly correlated around 0.7 or 0.8. This study involved the pooling of 11 cohort studies conducted in Europe, North America, and Australia of over 650,000 patients. We followed them for up to 21 years. The average or the median follow-up was nine years, and we had over 78,000 deaths. Is after accounting for age, the different studies, physical activity, alcohol, smoking, and BMI, uh, participants with a high higher waist circumference had uh, increased risk of mortality. That men with a waist circumference of greater than uh, or equal to 110 centimeters, or about 43 inches had a 50% higher risk of death compared to men uh, with a waist circumference of less than 90 centimeters or approximately 35 inches. This translates to about a three-year lower life expectancy from age 40. Women with a waist circumference of greater than or equal to 95 centimeters or approximately 37 inches had a 80% higher risk of death compared to women with a waist circumference of less than 70 centimeters or approximately 27 inches. This translates to about a five-year uh, lower life expectancy from age 40. Also, risk increase across the spectrum of waist circumference. For men, each five centimeter or approximately two inch increase in waist was associated with 7% higher risk of death. And for women, each five centimeter increase was associated with approximately 9% higher risk of death. The association with waist circumference and mortality was similar for both sexes and was apparent at all levels of BMI from 20 to 50. Associations were somewhat stronger for, at younger ages for longer follow-up and were a bit weaker among male current smokers. The strengths of this study were the prospective cohort study designs from 11 cohorts around the, uh, North America, Europe, and Australia. This is the largest study published to date. We had five times greater number of deaths than the largest previous study and we were able to, to adjust for important confounders. The main limitations of the study are that this was, uh, for the most part, self-reported height and weight and self-measured waist circumference, and it was only measured at one point in time. So our main conclusions from this study are that waist circumference was associated uh, with increased mortality across all levels of BMI. Uh, in part, this leads us to not recommend using a single uh, cut point for waist circumference, we recommend that waist circumference be combined with BMI in a clinical assessment of uh, uh, obesity-related mortality risk. There are two important points for patients. 
if your BMI and uh, waist circumference are uh, in the low range, then we recommend maintaining that over your life course. For people that are obese or have high waist circumference, the goal may not perhaps to be to get to these low ranges, but um, to at least uh, not increase them and, if possible, through physical activity and changes in diet, uh, lead to at least some decrease. This will have um, important health benefits. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayocliniceproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.com. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.